I'm from Community Christian School in Brighton, Florida, and I'll be doing an excerpt from The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. It is an ancient mariner, and he stoppeth one or three. By thy long gray beard and glittery nigh, now wherefore stoppest thou me? The bridegroom's doors are open wide, I am next to kin. The guests are met, the feast is set, may's tear the merry den. He holds them with his skinny hand. There was a ship, quoth he. Hold off, unhand me, greybeard loon. Eftsoon's his hand dropped he. He holds him with his glittering eye. The wedding guest is still. And he listens like a three years child. The mariner hath his will. The wedding guest sat on a stone. He cannot choose but hear. And thus spake on the ancient man, the bright eyed mariner. The ship was cheered, the harbor cleared, merrily did we drop. Below the kirk, below the hill, below the lighthouse top. And it came up upon the left. Out of the sea came he, and he shone bright, and on the right went down into the sea. And now the storm blast came, and he was tireless and strong. He struck with his or taking wings, and chased us south and long. With sloping mast and dipping prow, as who pursued with yell and blow, so treads the shadow of his foe, and forward bends his head. The ship drove fast, loud roared the blast. And southward, I we fled. And now? And now there came both mist and snow, and it grew wondrous cold. And ice, mast high, came floating by, as green as emerald. And through the drifts, the snowy cliffs did sin a dismal sheen. <clears throat> nor shapes of men, nor beast of king, the ice was all between. The ice was here, the ice was there, the ice was all around. It crocked and growled and roared and howled like noises in a swound. At length it crossed an albatross. Through the fog it came. As if it had been a Christian soul, we hailed it in God's name. It ate the food it ne'er had ate, and round and round it flew. The ice did split with a thunderous spit. The helmsman steered us through. And a good south wind sprung up behind. The albatross did fall. And every day, for food to play, came to the mariner's heart. In mist or cloud or master shroud, it perched for Vespers nine, while all the new the night through white through fog smoke white, glimmered the white moonshine. God save the ancient mariner from the fiends that plague thee thus. Why lookest thou so? With my crossbow, I shot the albatross. And the sun now rose upon the right. Out of the sea came he, still hid a mist, and on the left went down into the sea. And the good south wind still, broke, still blew behind, but no sweet bird did fall. Nor any day for food or play came to the mariner's hollow. I had done a hellish thing, and it would work and woe. For all of it, I killed the bird that made the breeze to blow. Ah, wretch, said they, the bird to slay, that made the breeze to blow. Day after day, day after day, we struck nor breath nor motion, as idle as a painted ship upon a painted ocean. Water, water everywhere, all the boards to shrink. Water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink. And every tongue through utter drought was withered at the root. We could not talk no more than if we had been chopped with soot. Well a day where evil looks at I from old and young. Instead of the cross, the albatross about my neck was hung. Alone, alone, all, all alone, alone on the wide, wide sea. And never a saint took pity on my soul in agony. The many men, so beautiful, they all dead did lie. Thousand, thousand slimy things lived on, and so did I. I looked upon the rotting sea, and I drew my eyes away. I looked upon the rotting deck, there the dead man lay. I looked to heaven and tried to pray, but whatever a prayer had gus, a wicked whisper came and made my heart as dry as dust. I closed my lids and kept them closed, the balls like pulses beat. For the sky and the sea and the sea and the sky lay like a load on my weary eye, 
and the dead were at my feet. An orphan's curse would drag to hell a spirit from on high. But oh, more horrible than that is the curse in the dead man's eye. Seven days, seven nights I saw that curse, and yet I could not die. Beyond the shadow of the ship, I watched the water snakes. They moved in tracks of shining white, and when they reared, their elfish light fell off in hoary flakes. Within the shadow of the ship, I watched the rich attire. Blue, glossy green, velvet black. They called and swam, and every track was a flash of golden fire. Oh, happy living things, no tongue their beauty might declare. A spring of love gushed from my heart. I blessed them unaware. Sure, my kind saint took pity on me, and I blessed them unaware. And the selfsame moment I could pray from my neck so free, the albatross fell off and sank like lead into the sea. Swiftly, swiftly flew the ship, yet she sailed softly too. Sweetly, sweetly blew the breeze, on me alone it blew. Oh, dream of joy! Is this indeed the lighthouse told by sea? Is this the kirk? Is this the hill? Is this my own country? The pilot and the pilot's boy, I heard them coming fast. Dear Lord in heaven, it was a joy the dead man could not blast. I saw a third. I heard his voice. It is the hermit good. He singeth loud his godly hymns that he maketh in the wood. He'll shrug my soul. He'll wash away the albatross's blood. And now, all in my own country, I stood mm. on the firm line. The hermit stepped forth from the boat, but scarcely he could stand. Oh, shrive me, shrive me, holy man! The hermit crossed his brow. Say quick, quoth he, I bid thee say, what manner of man art thou? Forthwith this frame of mine was bit with a woeful agony, which forced me to begin my tale, but then it left me free. Since then, at an uncertain hour, that agony returns, and until my ghastly tale is told, this heart within me burns. I pass like night from land to land. I have strange power of speech. As soon as his face I see, I know the man that must hear me, and to him my tale I teach. Farewell, farewell, with this I tell to thee, thou wedding guest. He prayeth well who loveth well, both man and bird and beast. He prayeth best and loveth best, all things both great and small. For the Lord God who loveth us, he made and loveth all. The mariner, whose eye is bright, whose beard is aged with horror, is gone, and now the wedding guests turn from the bridegroom's door. He go like one that hath been stunned, and is a sensible lord, a sadder and a wiser man. He rose the morrow morning.